What's going on everybody? This is Brian from SneakerFiles.com recapping the news and before I jump into things like always greatly appreciate a thumbs up and if you're new here make sure to subscribe by hitting the button below. Now as for some of the highlights in this video I have details on the Air Jordan 9 powder blue returning in 2024. As well we have a release date for the Air Jordan 12 cherry and much more from Jordan brand. Now from Nike, we got a lot to go over. As well, we have news from Reebok, Puma, and Adidas. And now without wasting too much more of your time, let's jump into the news. In 2022, Nike connected with Sanrio to release a special Air Presto inspired by Hello Kitty. Now in 2023, the brand will connect with Adidas to debut this Stan Smith. This pair features a cloud white, core black, and light flash red color combination. It comes with a Hello Kitty pouch that sits on the middle of the tongue. We also have the Hello Kitty logo, which lands where the Stan Smith logo would be. Finishing the look is Hello Kitty all over print on the liner. Currently, this pair has released overseas, and we don't have a stateside release just yet, but they should be coming soon at select retailers, including adidas.com. The next Puma MB02 set to release is known as Honeycomb. In reading from Puma's press release, this shoe is inspired by LaMelo's Buzz City team's new alternate jersey. This pair features a striking colorway that embodies Charlotte's rich history. The shoe's light green shade represents the branch of mint that was established to produce coins after North Carolina experienced the first U.S. gold rush. Now, I'm not a history buff, but I don't know nothing about that. I'm just reading it straight from Puma. But this pair is scheduled to release on March 10th, and the retail price will be $130. Reebok is releasing the Rec Center Pack, which includes the Reebok Pump Omni Zone 2 and the Reebok Question Low. The colors used throughout is a nod to local recreation centers where youth often find their love for the sport and community. The two have a similar theme. The Question Low is dressed in mostly gray with black on the toe. And then the Omni Zone 2 features black throughout with white detailing. Both shoes will feature accents of blue and orange. On the Question, we see it on the outsole. And both pairs are scheduled to release on March 17th. The Omni Zone 2 will retail at 170, while the Question Low will cost you 140. On to Nike, and we have a release date for the Nike Terminator High Panda. This shoe features a Phantom, Black, Pell Vanilla, and Cell color combination, and for those that want to purchase, they'll drop on March 16th for 135. They'll also be available on Nike.com. In this video, there's quite a few Nike Air Max 1s to go over. The first one to talk about is known as Unlock Your Space. Now, the details are slim on this shoe. However, going over the pair, they feature mostly white throughout, along with three mini embroidered swoosh logos on the toe in yellow, pink, and blue. Next, we have an orange to pink gradient on the liner, along with a holographic scribble on the swoosh logos. The pair also features a cutout swoosh on the heel, chrome lands on the lace tips, and your space is written above the air unit. Finishing the look is an icy translucent outsole. Unfortunately, no release date for this shoe, nor do we have a retail price, but they will release later this year. We have another women's exclusive Air Max 1. This one doesn't have a nickname, however, some people think it's another pair part of the Great Indoors series which could be possible, but the highlight on this pair is the various materials and exotic prints used. So this shoe features corduroy, leather, suede, and mesh, highlighted with pastel shades throughout. This pair features leopard print on the collars, while tiger print is seen on the insoles. While it might be hard to see, there is embroidered paisley print on the toe box, and other details includes an aged midsole and a black rubber outsole. Again, no release date for this pair. They will debut sometime later this year, and the retail price will be $150. We also have a release date for the clot, Nike Cortez Bruce Lee. So this pair is currently scheduled to release on March 10th at Juice Stores and online at juicestore.com. The retail price will be $140. Now we don't have a wider release date, 
for example, one for the sneakers app, but they are expected to debut soon along with the white and black pair. We also have a detailed look at the Nike Air Max 1 Mika Green. Now in the last video I was mispronouncing it so I do apologize that I was calling it Mika. Also we only had the one photo so here we have a detailed look and it features a white Mika Green photon dust and black color combination. Constructed with mesh, suede, and leather, we have white on the base, gray suede on the overlays, and green leather on the swoosh logos and the mudguard. Other details include a white midsole and black and shades of gray on the rubber outsole. At the time of recording this, a release date is scheduled for April 14th and the retail price will be 150. We have a possible release date for the Nike Jaw 1 day one. Now, the reason I'm saying possible is because John Morant's in quite a bit of trouble. I don't really want to get too into that just because I don't know all of the details surrounding it. I know Nike hasn't terminated his contract yet. I don't know if it's going to happen. Nike did make a statement which reads, we appreciate Ja's accountability and that he's taking the time to get the help he needs. We support his prioritization of his well-being. I do think by now they would have terminated the contract or something, but they may delay this release just because the release date isn't that far away. So this pair is scheduled to release on April 1st, which is less than a month away. And I don't know if all this heat he's getting, if it'll blow over by then. So there's a possibility they may get delayed. The retail price for this pair will be 110. We also have a detailed look at the clot fragment Nike Dunk Low. Now I showed a preview in the previous video, but going over the pair, it features a white and black color combination along with a silk tearaway upper. This is reminiscent of their last collaboration on the Air Force One that launched back in 2018. Black then lands on the leather eye stay and liner. We then have fragment branding abbreviated on the heels, which is embroidered, and then co-branding will land on the insoles. Finishing the look is a translucent outsole. Also, the shoes will come with special packaging. No release date for this shoe. However, they are expected to debut later this year. And as soon as I have more information, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Now this pair is dope. Here is a first look at the Nike Air Force One Low Jackie Robinson. And in my opinion, it's a shame because I don't think they'll get as much hype as the Dunk Low just for the simple fact it's not a dunk. But in my opinion, I think these are executed really nice. So last year, we saw the Dunk Low and the Air Griffey One Cleat release to celebrate Jackie Robinson. And for 2023, we have this Nike Air Force One Low. So it features the same color blocking as the Brooklyn Dodgers uniforms. We also have Jackie's number 42 embroidered by the hill, the team's logo embroidered on the tongue, and the Lace Dubrays have the year Jackie broke the color barrier in 1947, and the year he retired, 1956. We also have Change the World text on the laces. On the hill, we have baseball seams stitched on in red. And then finishing the look is a speckled midsole and a semi-translucent gum rubber outsole. Now, traditionally, I would say this shoe would drop in April, since April 15th is Jackie Robinson Day. However, there's been so many delays and we saw the dunk get pushed back a long time. So there is a possibility they could drop in April, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. And the retail price will be 120. We have another Nike Air Max 1 Premium with an exotic makeover. And it also features Michigan-like colors. This shoe comes just in a Midnight Navy, Varsity Maze, and Natural Color Combination. Utilizing premium leather on the base, nylon tongues, and then we have an embroidered swoosh logo on the lateral forefoot. Highlighting this pair is snakeskin texture on the swoosh logos, and then we have another reptile texture on the mudguard. I think that's alligator, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe somebody watching can leave a comment just to let me know. Dressed in mostly navy and yellow, white lands on the midsole, and then we have a yellow rubber outsole. No release date for this pair, nor do we know of a retail price just yet, but more details on the way. Our next premium Nike Air Max 1 is known as Slate Blue, and this shoe features a white, slate blue, black, and soft gray color combination. Constructed with leather, suede, and mesh, white runs across most of the base, while slate blue and soft gray appear on the overlays. Next, we have black suede on the mudguards, red fills in the branding, and the highlight of the shoe is embroidered pine trees on the hills that represents the Oregon forest. 
finishing the look is a white midsole and a slate blue and black rubber outsole. I like this pair. It's definitely nice. The colorway used reminds me of another shoe. I just can't think of what shoe that is on the top of my head. I want to say it's part of the ACG line. Again, if you know what this shoe represents or the colorway it's taken from, let me know down in the comment section. I know somebody's got to know it. Again, no release date nor a retail price, but this pair will debut sometime later this year. These next couple of shoes that I'm going to talk about, we have release dates for that I was told by my sources. So they haven't shown up on release calendars just yet, but this is the Nike Air Force One Low for Horsemen. So the Four Horsemen Nike Air Force One was created back in 2003 and celebrated LeBron James signing to Nike. The shoes is a tribute to LeBron's friends and business partners, Maverick Carter, Rich Paul, and Randy Mims. Those four individuals are known as the Four Horsemen. The pair is dressed in a white, deep forest, and wolf gray colorway, and it's a nod to St. Vincent St. Mary, which is the high school LeBron James attended. Other details includes a night chest piece embroidered on the hills, an LR, MR embroidered on the hills, which represents LeBron James, Maverick Carter, Rich Paul, and Randy Mims. So if you're interested in buying this pair, they will debut on April 7th, and the retail price will be $150. We also have a release date for the Nike Air Max 186 Big Bubble. So this shoe features a white university red and light neutral gray colorway. For those that don't know, the original production run of the Air Max 1 took place in 1986 before the Air Max 1 hit retailers in full force in 1987. That shoe featured a bigger window. So Nike, what they did is they recreated that original mold. Now, this pair, the mold, I should say, isn't quite on point with the OG. I've seen a lot of people complain about that. And yeah, it's true because on the sneakers live, they showed the OG pair and then they showed the new retro, which was also a sample, but they looked almost identical. Now, when you have this shoe, the retail pair compared to the OG, it's just not really on point, but that's not to take away from the shoe because I think it's still nice and I'm sure a lot of people will buy them. And as most of you expected, this pair will debut on March 26th, which is Air Max Day. The retail price is 150 Also, I've seen 160 reported, but I was told 150 Let me know your thoughts on this pair down below. Official images popped up of the Nike Air Zoom Generation in dark gray, which is also our first look. Now, this shoe was expected to release around All-Star Weekend, but we're now in March. So hopefully we see them come soon. But this pair can also be called Cemented in Time. And I believe that the inspiration is tied into LeBron James becoming the NBA's leading scorer. Now, there was a lot of promo clips going around. And one of those clips, I believe it was called Cemented in Time, which was in black, white, and gray. And just for a moment, they previewed the shoe. So to go over the pair, they feature a dark gray, wolf gray, and anthracite color combination, utilizing a grayscale upper while constructed with suede, nubuck, mesh, and leather. Anthracite lands on the heel, eye stay, tongue, and then we have a semi-translucent rubber outsole with marbleized detailing. Honestly, even though it's all gray, these are really nice. And if they do pay tribute to him becoming the NBA's leading scorer, it makes them even more dope. But to the release details, unfortunately, we don't have one just yet. I should be finding out that information soon, and the retail price will be 190 In 2023, Supreme and Nike will connect to release more Nike SB Dunks. Initially, it was three SB Dunk Lows, and then I'm hearing there's going to be four now. But adding on to that four is the Supreme Nike SB Dunk High. So there's no images but we do have a little bit of information. And apparently this collaboration will feature white long hair suede on the base while the SB Dunk Low will come in black. So I don't know about the other three colorways that people are talking about on the SB Dunk Low, but one of them will be in black apparently. They'll also have Nike SB and Supreme co-branding throughout, special lace dubrays, and will come with special packaging and extra laces. So the details are a little bit slim. We do have a little bit of info. So I did want to supply you with that. And unfortunately, we don't have a release date, nor a time frame, or even a retail price. But I'm going to be asking around, so more information coming soon. Hello.
Last week, we previewed the UNC pair, and now we take a look at the Air Jordan 1 Low OG UCLA PE that was made for the 2023-2024 college football season. This pair features a white premium suede on the base and blue cracked overlays. Next, we have yellow with a stingray-like texture on the swoosh logos and then quilted satin liners. UCLA's logo appears on the insoles, while a mini swoosh is embroidered on the lateral forefoot. Other details include a cell midsole and a light gum rubber outsole. Now, unfortunately, this pair won't release to the public, but since I showcased the UNC pair, I wanted to show the UCLA pair. But let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think Jordan Brand should release this pair along with the UNC pair? Jordan Brand is going to further on its Dong Dang collection. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Again, if I mispronounced it, I do apologize. But the first pair to showcase is the Air Jordan 37 Low. So this shoe features a black, orange chalk, lilac ice, hydrogen blue, pink rise, and white color combination. Constructed with woven mesh panels and leather overlays, we have Dong Dan's tournament logo on the heel tabs. For those that don't know, this shoe pays tribute to the Chinese streetball tournament that takes place every summer in Beijing, China. They also come with a carbon fiber plate in the midfoot, Formula 2-3 foam is placed in the heel, and then they come with a translucent hang tag with Dong Dan and Jumpman logos, Beijing text, and a QR code that takes you to Jordan Brand's WeChat account. Other details include speckled detailing on the midsole and a multicolor rubber outsole. For this shoe, we don't have a release date. They will debut sometime later this year, and the retail price will be $195. We have another Air Jordan 1 Low releasing later this year. This pair is known as Ice Lilac and it features a black, ice lilac, and white color combination. So to go over the pair, they are constructed with leather and then we have mesh on the tongues. The shoe is dressed in mostly black, which also lands on the tongue, laces, and heel. Lilac is placed on the swoosh, the other branding throughout, toe, and liner. Finishing the look is a white midsole in day, semi-translucent rubber outsole. No release date on this shoe. I'm sure we'll get one soon and the retail price will be 120. There's gonna be a lot of different colorways releasing on the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Comfort 2. And now we have a look at a pair known as Chrome Swoosh. This pair features a white metallic silver, photon dust, wolf gray, black, and cell color combination. Going over the pair, they are constructed with leather, mesh lance on the tongue, and we also have the signature cutout swoosh logos on the panels. Now, those swoosh logos are done in chrome, hence the nickname, while the rest of the shoe is done in white and shades of gray. Zoom Air branding lands on the tongue with a translucent label, and of course, they come with Formula 23 foam cushioning. Again, no release date for this pair. They will debut sometime later this year, and the retail price will be 150 Jordan Brand recently unveiled their summer 2023 collection. It wasn't every single pair releasing, but there was a decent amount of pairs shared. Now, for the most part, all of them we've already seen with the exception of one, which I'll talk about later on in this video. And the only time I'm going to talk about a shoe from that preview is if the nickname changed or I haven't featured them in a while. So the first pair is the Air Jordan 2 Low Seersucker. Now this pair was being called Atmosphere and Easter, and the pair features an Atmosphere, Pell Vanilla, White, and Photon Dust colorway. Highlighting this shoe is Seersucker Textile on the upper, and a Tinted Hill Counter. Overall, this shoe fits Easter and Spring, so whatever you want to call them, and the release date is scheduled for April 8th, and the retail price will be $150. Another pair that was shown is the Air Jordan 1 High OG Vibrations of Nija. Now this shoe is also being called Craft, but it's part of the Craft series. Those Skyline Air Jordan 1s that are also coming out, that is also a Craft shoe. But with the announcement, we have a little bit more release information. So they're still scheduled to release on May 27th in adult sizing. However, they will be somewhat on the limited side. So they will be available exclusively at Jordan brand neighborhood partner stores, also known as NBHD stores. So not every retailer will have them, and the retail price will be 180 The Air Jordan 13 Black Flint was also featured in the summer preview. However, that's not the reason why I'm talking about them now. Recently, on-feet photos popped up, 
And that's why they're shown here. I know I talked about them in the previous video, so I wasn't going to feature them here until these on-feed photos came out. But for those that don't know, they do feature reflective mesh on the upper, and they will release in full family sizing. Currently scheduled to release on April 22nd, the retail price is $200. I'm not a huge fan of the Air Jordan 1 Low OG just for the simple fact that I don't think it looks good on feet, for me that is, but I do like the model. Here we have new photos of the Air Jordan 1 Low OG black cement, and in my opinion I think these look a lot better than the white cements coming out. And for those that don't know, this shoe helps celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Air Jordan 3. Dressed in black, muslin, tech gray, white, and cell, this pair features black leather across the base while we have elephant print that wraps the toe and heel. Finishing the look is a somewhat aged midsole. Now, this shoe is scheduled to release on June 23rd for 140. They'll also be available in men's, women's, and grade school sizing. With the summer 2023 unveiling, we got a few more images of the Air Jordan 7 white infrared. For those that don't know, this shoe is inspired by the OG Air Jordan 6 white infrared. And I don't understand why Jordan brand just didn't bring back the OG pair. It's been a while since they dropped. Maybe they're going to drop it next year. They're going to space it out. I'm not entirely sure. But although it's nicknamed white infrared, the actual shade used is crimson. And as you can see, white runs throughout. We have crimson detailing as well as black and leather on the upper. This pair will be available in adult and grade school sizing and they'll debut on June 30th for $200. We're going to take a quick break from the summer 2023 unveiling from Jordan Brand and move on to some official photos that recently leaked. So first up we have the Air Jordan 1 High OG washed pink. And to be honest I don't know if it's the lighting of these images but they look a lot different here. The pink looks a bit darker. It might just be the lighting, but overall, I do like the shoes. I like the color blocking. But for me, I'll probably pass just because there's so much stuff releasing. It's hard to actually keep up with. But if you're a fan of this shoe, they drop on April 22nd. They will be available in women's sizing and the retail price will be 180. Now this is a pair I really want. It's the Air Jordan 1 High OG Lucky Green, AKA Celtics. For those that don't know, they are inspired by the 2009 DMP pack, but for 2023, they'll have Nike Air on the tongue and they won't have a Jumpman on the hill like the 2009 pair. There seems like there's quite a bit of hype for the shoe. They're also expected to be a GR. They're going to drop in full family sizing as well. I think with all the shoes that are releasing, that will make this pair a bit easier to obtain just because there is a lot of different shoes dropping, but from what I've seen, a lot of people are filling them. So. I don't think they'll be too difficult to get, but if you're going after them, like always, good luck. And they drop on April 15th for 180. This will be the last time I talk about the Air Jordan 4 Thunder unless there's a release date change or something along those lines. I know I've been talking about them a lot with the whole white stitching controversy, but official images popped up of the 2023 pair straight from Nike. So without a doubt, this confirms that they will come with black stitching. Again, I don't know what's going to happen to the pair with white stitching. I don't know about that. They could wind up in outlets. They might not. But the shoes are currently scheduled to release on May 13th for 210 and they will be available in full family sizing. Another shoe part of the Dongdan 2023 collection is the Air Jordan 5 Low. We recently received a first look. And like I mentioned, this pair is inspired by the Chinese street ball tournament that takes place during the summer in Beijing, China. The shoes will feature a black, white, lilac, ice, and pink rice color combination, utilizing black nubuck across the upper and pink on the speckled shark teeth on the midsole. Connecting to the tournament, we have Dongdan's logo on the heels. Next, we have more pink on the lace locks and exposed white stitching runs across the overlays. Finishing the look is a Jumpman and Sky graphic on the insoles and a translucent rubber outsole. In my opinion, this is a lot better than the Air Jordan 37 Low, but that's not really saying much since most people are going to pick the Air Jordan 5 over the Air Jordan 37. But overall, I like the color placement. It looks good. Currently, no release date expected to debut later this year, and the retail price will be 200 Official images of the Nike SB Air Jordan 4 Pine Green recently popped up, giving us our best look yet. Now, we've gone over the shoe several times, so I'm not going to go over the color placement this time, 
But I did want to go into some further details. Now, an individual who goes by Tuxedo America on Twitter, he gave us a full breakdown of the inspiration behind the shoes as well as the tech that has changed. So some of this stuff I'm going to read is from him. So big shout out to him. One of the things that it said is the colorway inspiration, one being inspired by a scrapped military green sample from years ago, another being how the colorway of the fours match the new Quick Strike SB box era, which has been kicked off today, starting with the release of the Doyen SB Blazers. The addition of gum soles is due to the fact that gum soles and translucent soles are extremely grippy. So naturally it was going to be added for this release. He also goes on to say that supposedly they changed the stitching thread to what they use on SBs instead of regular Jordans. Due to how on an early prototype pair which was pretty much a regular AJ4 with some of the aforementioned changes minus the threading the stitching blew out very fast. The tongue is a bit more padded, that is to protect the top of your foot or ankle. Fat tongues are used in skating for protecting that area from getting hit by a board getting loose while doing technical tricks. For the heel tab, wings, and mesh, the materials have been changed on them from being hard plastic to a rubber compound so it can hold up against grip tape much better. At one point, there was consideration on removing the wings on the SB4s because of how on the early prototypes they were just not as durable and eventually they decided to keep the wings but change the material from plastic to rubber. So there's a lot more but those are pretty much the highlights for the changes. Obviously just by looking at the shoes you can tell they're a little bit more beefed up and instead of a Jumpman or Nike Air on the hill we have Nike SB. Now as for the release details, March 17th is when they're going to drop at skate shops and then March 21st is when they're scheduled to release on sneakers and select Jordan brand retailers. Now, I haven't heard which Jordan brand retailers are going to get them. So more on that on the next video. And the retail price will be 225 Also, on a side note, I've heard that the production isn't high, but it isn't low. However, they produce more pairs than most people have expected, whatever that means. However, the hype still outweighs how many pairs that are going to drop. But unfortunately, I don't have specifics as far as numbers. Most of the time, I don't even trust those numbers. And let me know your thoughts on this pair down below. Do you plan on picking them up or passing? The last pair to go over from the summer 2023 Air Jordan preview is the Air Jordan 14 Laney. So this gives us our very first look. We only have a few images. And as you can see, they're identical to the mock-up. Now, some of you may remember last year, Jordan Brand released the Air Jordan 14 Ginger. That shoe initially was a low when it first released. And now they just placed the same colorway on the mid. That pair is actually still sitting. And in fact, you can get it for pretty cheap. I bought that pair at the full retail price. I probably should have waited, but I don't mind it. And... I'm planning on doing the same with the Air Jordan 14 Laney. So for those that don't know, this is an original colorway. Originally dropped in low top form and they last released in 2015. Dressed in a Varsity Royal, Black, Varsity Maze, and White color combination. The pair features blue nubuck across the base. And then we have black on the tongue, toe box, liner, and most of the outsole. Other details includes white on the midsole, within the Ferrari inspired emblem, and Varsity Maze accents. Currently scheduled to release on May 27th, the retail price will be 210. Holiday 2023, we're gonna have a lot of releases from Jordan Brand. It seems like there's more than normal. And in my opinion, I actually think the holiday lineup is probably one of the better ones to come. Not just for 2023, but in previous years. And one of those pairs that are going to return is the Air Jordan 12 Cherry. Now the images you're looking at is not the 2023 release, it's actually from 2009. Now the reason I'm speaking about them once again is because we have some release details. So currently this pair is scheduled to release on November 18th and the retail price will be 210 Also they will debut in full family sizing. Definite pickup for me, let me know your thoughts down below. I was told about some exclusive information for 2024 and that is that the Air Jordan 9 Powder Blue will be making a return. So for those that don't know, this pair originally released back in 1994, and then a retro took place in 2010, and that is it for the shoe. However, in 2010, 
the pair was different from the original release. For example, the retro had the number 23 embroidered on the hill in black, whereas the OG pair didn't have his number. Also, the shade of blue was a little bit different. In this segment, I'm going to use a mixture of the OG and the retro pair. And from my sources, I was told that yes, they are going to return. They should come in OG form. And this is the first time in a while that we saw an OG9 return. I don't even know when the last time. I think the OG pair, what they're called OG, or what they're calling Space Jam, that might have been the last OG pair to retro. So I really don't have much more information. They are expected to feature a white, black, and dark powder blue color combination. The shoes were also a nod to the University of North Carolina, where Michael Jordan attended. And they're expected to release during the early part of 2024. So that's pretty much it for now. I do have a little bit more 2024 info. One pair I'm waiting for more information on just because it's really simple what I'm going to leak on it. It doesn't give any real background to it. It's just the colorway. And the colorway is very simple at that as well. But leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the Air Jordan 9 Powder Blue returning to retailers. And that's going to do it for this video. Like always, greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting the button below. As well, make sure to turn on the notification bell so you can be alerted every time I drop a new video. Now, I do have more stuff for Holiday 2023 to leak. That will probably be in my next video. But for this one, let me know down in the comments what you liked or disliked as well. If you have any questions, leave that down below. Again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Thank you.